Hey Comic Con, I am here with the one and only Brian Volkweiss. Uh, Hello, Nacelle. Hey. Uh, old friend of the, yeah. you know, the con and, and uh, you know, of toys. Uh, I love what you have done just, you know, for the industry and for just the recognition. Thank uh, you. I think it was, it's super important what you did for toy stores during the pandemic. Thank uh, It's you know, uh, it, I feel like you're just living all of our dreams. You know, we, I feel we, like I'm in a dream. <laughs> I mean, I really, I really do. I mean, I really, I can't. I think about it more often than maybe people would think. But what if Toys That Made Us had never happened? Yeah. It changed everything. No, you changed absolutely everything. I get it. So, so how? You do a. I mean, you're a man of many talents. You have talents. you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. Uh, because you started off, uh, I mean, I, not necessarily start. You started in production, but you, well, you actually started, your I started own... off in management. Oh, is that right? I was okay. a manager. Okay, for ten years. Yeah, yeah. I managed comedians. Okay. Yeah. And then you turned that into producing. It's, it's we uh, we started. So I managed comedians uh -huh. for about fifteen years. No, not fifteen years. But for about ten years, all we made was stand-up comedy specials. Right. Then uh, about three years ago, four years ago, we started doing documentaries with that. We do the show, it's not toy related, um, but we did a show called uh, Down to Earth with Zach Efron. Terrific Netflix. show. Thank you. A huge, Thank you. I, I wrote to you about that. I said, Very I know kind. I talk about toys all the time, but my wife and I love that show. Thank you. And it's so important, and everyone should watch that on Netflix. Two seasons out right now. Make it a priority. Thank you. But we own that show. Mm -hmm. Like so, with toys that made us and backwards, we didn't own those. We would sell them, and then that was it. Like okay. we were out once we were paid. So starting with Down to Earth with Zac Efron, we started owning them and basically licensing them to the companies. Right. So that led to um, the center seat, 55 years of Star Trek for History Channel, uh, and that led to Icons on Earth, and that led to a lot of other stuff we're doing now. And of course. I can't talk about yet. So, um, and that's what led to RoboForce. So we're basically, the model we use for the stand-up comedy specials, where we would self-finance, license, get the rights back, and then distribute. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing for RoboForce. That's what we're doing for Biker Mice. Like that's, yeah, that, it's all the same thing. It's just we're changing the genres in which we're working. Right. But it's the same model. So how do you, what kind of, what are the different pitfalls you find producing an action figure line versus, you know, uh, like, a, like a down to earth where you're, you're sending people across the globe <laughs> to get things done? So, I mean, the, the pitfalls of making a TV show I mean, they are what they are, and at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is, unless we commit fraud in any way, we're insured. Mm -hmm. So we have shit go wrong all the time, but we're insured, yeah. so it doesn't really matter. But with the toys, I mean, it's a popularity contest. Right. So we're very lucky. We only have one line right now that's not profitable yet, but A, you'll notice I said yet. Right. Um, but B, we have seven toy lines. We've only been making toys for two years. Six are profitable. Yeah. I mean, stand-up specials. I, I, the first seven I made, I can assure you, six of them were not profitable. I <laughs> know. Uh, within a year, like they eventually become profitable. Yeah. But yeah. So that's the risk. Yeah. The risk is you hope. You're getting it right. Yeah. But you don't know. There's no way you know until you do the pre-sale. And at the end of the day, you look at the numbers and you learn. Like, I'll give you an example. As you know, I think, we have the Expanse. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the rights to the Expanse. We're announcing that pretty much today. I mean, we've announced that we're doing it. But today we're showing for the first time the actual figures. Yeah. Are we going to make 100 grand? Are we gonna make a million? Are we gonna make ten million? I'm not saying Are we gonna make ten thousand dollars? Like I don't know. <laughs> but I do know our commitment to do it is seven figures. So it's a risk. I hope I got it right. I hope I'm not the only person alive that likes the experience. But the truth of the matter is, as it relates to myself, I mean it's just my gut. Like I didn't go to business school. Like I'm not a moron. I didn't take 
some stupid ass thing I know lasted half a season in 1971 yeah. and do a toy line. <laughs> Well, we don't know the expanse. It's been off the air for two years. Right. So I'm not talking we'll see. That way. But you don't know. Did you ever envision yourself as the head of a company? Never. Never. Oh, the head of a company? Yeah. I know, I know. Again, it's, a, it's funny you're asking the questions I've never been asked before. <laughs> yes and no. Okay. That's a weird answer. I have a weird going on. My dream, my goal coming out to Hollywood was to build a studio. That's where I'm at. I was very inspired by George Lucas, uh -huh. but I did it very differently than he did, or obviously. Italy, that's an understatement of the millennium. <laughs> um, so I always wanted to build a studio, but I never wanted to be a boss. Okay. So it just, this is going to sound like, almost like it's impossible to be true, but I swear to you it's the truth. I kind of became a boss by accident. I'm, i got to be careful with this topic these days. If I could find someone who is very, I'll get, no, no, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Sure. No, no, no. Like, if you were to say to me, Brian, like, what is your dream right now? What would be the greatest thing that could happen to you? My answer would be that the company keeps growing and keeps doing cool stuff. Exactly. But I can focus on one thing. Mm. I don't get to focus on one thing. No. I have to focus on dozens and dozens of things creatively. But then I also have to deal with the HR. I also have to deal with the CFO. Like I got to deal with all that stuff. Tax issues in Burbank versus California versus Los Angeles. Like it would be my dream to find someone who could replace me for the business side of what I'm doing. And, and that will happen one day, right. of course. Um, but that I could just work on one thing at a time, like a normal director. That that would make me happy. Very happy. That's my dream. But the 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 opposite of that is what you've done yes. because you have you're still doing comedy specials. Yep. You are doing toys now. You have a publishing wing. You're doing animation now. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it's funny. Did That's the antithesis of your dreams. Did you ever see Hot Shots? Yeah. Yeah. There's a great line in Hot Shots, right when Charlie Sheen is about to have sex with the, the, the French actress, right? yeah. Miso, I think is her name. Um, and right before they're about to have sex, she looks at him with big, big blue eyes and says, I just want to let you know I'm a virgin. And Chris, uh, Charlie Sheen, very, you know, very surprised, goes, really? And she goes, yes. I'm just not very good at it. And that's how I feel to answer your question. Like, I like growth. I like, you know, as you know, I'm a huge Trekkie. Mm -hmm. The part about Star Trek that really resonates me with me is the premise of to seek out strange new worlds. Yeah. So every time I see an opportunity that we haven't done before, I'm attracted to it. So that's the problem. That's the, the rub. The perfect world would be to replace myself in a lot of the things that we're doing on the business side and even the creative side. Like, you know, we're starting off on Biker Mice. Right. I just got the first animatic for the first episode of RoboForce. So now I'm doing RoboForce and Biker Mice. In the perfect world, maybe, I, well, I won't say how, but in the perfect world, <laughs> someone else could be running stuff and I could choose, oh, I want to run Sectors myself. I want to run Garlu myself. Y'all can do whatever you want. But I'm just doing this today, yeah. or this year. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And I, I also find it interesting that you you take your, I assume, love of comedy, because that's where you started from, and you have moved that into your toys as yeah. well. So oh, yeah. Yeah, that, no. Uh, the, it's funny. Here's what I always tell people. The best dramas have a lot of comedy. Seven. How many times have you seen Seven. It's quite a few. There's a lot of comedy. The, yeah. the police chief is like, this is not even my desk. Like, <laughs> um, Brad Pitt talking about that weird the FBI guy. Um, just because he has a library card doesn't make him Yoda. So like the perfect dramas have comedy, but the perfect comedies have drama. 
Right. So I've been aware of that since like college, mm -hmm. maybe even high school. So yes, we put a lot of comedy in our work, but I, we're not the first to do it. Right. We might focus on it more, but I would argue Marvel got the memo before anybody. Like in terms of implementing that logic. Yeah. So how has it been for you sort of being the world builder now for things like RoboForce? It's the greatest feeling in the world. I, I've never had anything like it. it. Today, walking around on my phone, um, one of the things in the show is the city that it takes place in is covered in this gigantic dome that is just this commercial advertisement, commercial. It's called the Adnosphere. Okay. And, you know, I'm approving the ads we're making on the on the on the on my phone walking around Comic Con. Right. The whole idea that you know it was my idea to take what happened in real life with RoboForce and Transformers. That's the plot of the show. Okay. The the entire plot was RoboForce was supposed to be the heroes yeah. and the same day they were announced, this other company came out with another robot that was better. And RoboForce went from being soldiers and firefighters and cops and lifeguards to being janitors and roto rooters and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the whole premise of the show based on reality. But that was my decision. Right. If you look at the box, the back of the box, I wrote that while walking through the building on my phone. Because, uh, do you know Michael Goodman? You ever deal with Goodman? Yeah, he runs yeah, yeah. our toy department? Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, Goodman's texting me every fucking day. We need the boxes done. We need the boxes done. We can't ship until we need the box. So I'm like, woo! And that's now the cartoon. Yeah. So that's the greatest feeling in the world. Because when you produce comedy specials and documentaries, you're really supporting the talent mm -hmm. and the story. Right. This is building it. Yeah, yeah it's, I've never had so much fun in my life. Literally. <laughs> That's great to hear. Yeah. I love to hear that. So, uh, in your own collecting, because you travel so much, you get to uh, hit up a lot of places. I do. Is there still a, a white whale yeah, out there for Kokomo, you? Yeah, Kokomo, man. Still haven't been to Kokomo Toys. Okay. Yeah, it's my number one... Have you been there? I have not. My daughter goes to the University of Indiana. How so I'm hoping... I know, I just haven't been able to... To veer off well, and uh, you know what the problem with it is, right? Um, it's like four hours from everything. Yeah. So like I have even like and I've done the math. I had Google everything. I will have a shoot in Chicago, and I have seriously many times considered get because don't forget I got to get back. Right. Yes. So that's an eight-hour drive. I got to manage in one day. Yeah. I've only thought about getting up at like two in the morning driving there and then like being there when they open right driving back i haven't gone through with it though <laughs> but yeah that's my white well i understand that. how about something in for your own collection that you're still looking for the only thing left is flicks oh okay. that's it everything else um post toys that made us i got that right. i was looking for but the funny thing is, like, I don't know, I call it grazing. Uh-huh. Like, I come here to, look, to any convention, so I'm not looking for, I mean, there's a little dumb stuff, like, I'm looking for Supergirl from the new Flash movie, okay. can't find her anywhere. Yeah. So, yes, I'm looking for her. But I'll find it somewhere. It might right. not be today, it might yeah. be Nick, but I'll find her. But the only real white whale is Flex. Okay. Interesting. And I, I'm to blame for that. <laughs> like, when Toys and Matas came out, you could get them for 10 to 20 grand. Yeah. You know, they, one just sold this year for 270000 Yeah. Before uh, buyer's premium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I just... Yeah, fine. Uh, I love I, talking to you. You're uh, so good to us. <laughs> take whatever. All right. I'll sit here until we gotta go. <laughs> all right. And I mean that, Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, we're good. So let me see. Um, You're on the MVP list. Well, thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> I will put in, uh, it, if the comedians, if that line keeps going, I would like to throw my suggestion to the race. There has never been product of the Marx Brothers. Interesting. Okay. I would love to see that. So. Okay. I have not heard that before. <laughs> yes. Three Should Stooges have had action figures. Yep. Laurel and Hardy have had action figures, but we never got the Marx Brothers. So. That's true. That, right. uh, that yeah, is I my... Like it. <laughs> it's, I always hear um, Pryor and, oh, sure. um, and Carlin. 
Yeah. And I, I'll be honest, if I shouldn't even say this, but I worked real hard on Pride. Yeah. And I just couldn't get it done. Hmm. That's interesting. So yeah, that, that, that's something else you kind of have to to take into account is working with the estates oh, yeah. of these people. Um, but again, back to your first question, yeah. what do our three toy lines have in common, or what do our three character characters, what do our three comedians have in common for our Legends of Laughter line? Mm -hmm. We're already in business with them right. on the audio side, because we also have a record label. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. the oldest part of the company, actually, yeah. except yeah. for management. And we already were in business with them selling their stuff. Yeah. I, just on a, a personal note, uh, you know, I, I follow you on social media and stuff, and you recently went back to the childhood summer yeah. camp, yeah. and your your kids went there, right? Can you talk a little right bit now. about that experience? Because I, I think that was so delightful to, to it was see. Beyond delightful, you know, one of the interesting things is I don't know if you raised your daughter in the same town you grew up in. No. See me neither. Yeah. So growing up in New York and living in LA. When I dropped my son off to camp, for the first time ever, I was standing where my dad stood. So when I'm waving goodbye to Grant, Victor Weiss was waving goodbye to Brian. <laughs> like, that is the first time it's ever happened to me. And what I always tell people is, I just told Brian this a couple of minutes ago, um, anyone who likes me, 51% of it is because of that camp. Hmm. So, and I could tell, I was just there for parents' weekend. Yeah. Um, I could see in the three weeks, my, my 20 years from now, my kids hear this and be careful. Um, let's just say my uh, son had a little bit more growing up to do than my daughter. Okay. I think he'd agree with that. Grant, if you ever hear this, you know I love you. <laughs> uh, but he's also in his defense, 15 months younger. Right, right. But anyway. I could see in his face. You know what's funny about this camp? And maybe all camps, but on the brochure, on the YouTube, on the social media, they show the beautiful lake. They show the archery. They show the baseball. They show the woodwork. You know what they don't show? At the camp that I went to, every kid twice a week has to be a waiter. So you're you're setting the table. My son yeah. never fucking set a table in his life, <laughs> let alone for ten people. Yeah, yeah. So he sets the table, then he goes and gets the food. He serves the food. Yeah. Then he buses the nasty, gross plates back to the kid. Yeah, he's doing that twice a week for a month. Yeah. That's what changed me, and that's what I could see the minute I saw my son. The longest I ever been away from him, three weeks. Yeah. Um, I could see it in his face, everything about his posture, his confidence. Because, like, it's easy and I think cliche to think, oh, I'm good at baseball, that helps with confidence. And yes, it does. Yeah. But setting a table, cleaning a table, cleaning a cabin, being forced to make your bed every day or you don't get a candy bar. Yeah. That's being what in I service. Can... And yes. I, I feel like there, uh, there's a lot of yes. those themes. In down to earth, too. Yeah. I mean the the reverence which they approach these different cultures yeah. like in the Australian season. Yes, like yes. That. So, yeah, it's interesting to see those sort of key tenets weave their way into your work, and and what a testimony to that camp, you know. It's 120 years this year. Yeah, it's so fascinating. Huh. <laughs> camp Beckett, Beckett in the Berkshires, and the girls. I'm going to do a plug for the camp, not for our shit. All right. uh, camp Beckett in the Berkshires, Chimney Corners in the Berkshires. That's the girls' camp. Chimney okay. Corners. Well, I appreciate that detour. But it just yeah, uh, no, I I'm saw that, and as a father myself, you know, it's the best, man. I, I I think your wife posted uh, like a screenshot of the sort of the the, the rules yeah. that are in the, the, the cafeteria, and I screenshot of that because they were so beautiful. It's, it's, so uh, my, so it's, um, again, I'm so glad, so great, you're, you're really bringing up, it's funny, I wanted to talk to you anyway, but like, you're really asking me stuff no one ever talks about, like, those models made me, yeah. like, you can ask anyone we work with, I, and they don't even know where it comes from, but they'll be like, Ugh. I'm like, play the game, Yeah. play the game, it's that simple, play the game, like, I remember when I was a camper, you know, me, other kids would be like, oh, you know, I'm a little tired, I don't feel like playing soccer, play the game. Yeah. You don't have to play it great. You don't have to be the guy running full court, but play the game. There's another one that's a huge impact to me. Peace. 
through understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could tear up right now <laughs> even talking about it. Like, that's the secret of fucking life. I know. You yeah. tell the biggest Trump supporter and the biggest Biden supporter, get in a room for four hours. I'm not saying you're going to agree with each other at the end, but if you understand each other, yeah. maybe you won't want to chop each other's heads off with a sword. There, there's common ground yes. to be had. There yeah. always is. Yeah. 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 And there's eight models, not just two. Right. Yeah. Manners make it the man. You can ask again. Everyone I work with, I'm obsessed with punctuality. Not for everyone, but me, for myself. Sure. I, I, if I, I have a rule. If I'm ever more than three minutes late, I always apologize. Hmm. Like, yeah, like that's manners make it the man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that uh, you know. Uh, I, I want to think, and, I, and I, I think it is true that that it is part of what contributes to your success. That's how you're able to grow things. That is how people want to follow you. That is how you get people on board, you know, for to convince people of these projects, you know, to, to entrust you with things. You know, it, it's you just reminded me of something that's funny. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but I was an employee at my company before I bought it. Okay. So I bought it from the prior owner. Okay, I did not know that. And I, when you do that, especially if you don't like the name of the old company, um, it's really hard to find a name that is available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Nacelle, and I love it now, but that was not my only first choice. Okay. At all. Okay. Um, the number one name I wanted to call the company was Transparent. Because... I'm, I just I believe in real time transparency, yeah. and people are always saying to me, Brian, you're so honest, you're so honest, and it's always like, why lie? Like if people don't like what I'm saying, we don't watch our stuff, don't buy our stuff. That's completely fair. Yeah. There's stuff I don't buy, and there's stuff I don't like. But it just is what it is. So you might as well be transparent. You might as well be transparent in real time, and unless there's like legal issues, why not always tell the truth? Yeah. Yeah. But it was taken. By okay. the way, you would not believe what was taken. One of my other options, I wanted to call the company Promontory Point Entertainment. You know what that is? I don't. That's where the train tracks met when they were building the Intercontinental oh, okay. Railroad. Okay. That was that taken. Was taken. Yes. Oh, huh. that is fascinating. All right. So uh, you just had a big announcement today with uh, your biker mice from Mars. To That's get right. Back on to. Uh, to the nerd stuff, yeah. if people don't mind our yeah, yeah. our fatherly detour. Uh, right. So yeah, Ryan Reynolds is, yeah, is going to be involved Reynolds. now. Yes, He's, he is. Yes, he is. How did how did that come about? You know, it's funny. Everybody always thinks Hollywood is like magic and Jedi's and you know going to these parties and you know secret meetings, agents, managers, all that. Um, we bought the rights. We do what we always do, and this is part of why we do it. We announced it. A friend of mine, Kevin, had just gone to Maximum Effort, Okay. He, and he calls me immediately. He goes, dude, that's my favorite cartoon. Oh, that's awesome, Kevin. I'm so happy to hear that. And he goes, we should do something together. And I'm like, wait, you're at the company with Ryan Reynolds, right? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we should do something <laughs> together. That's how it happened. It's just that. I knew Kevin. Kevin knew me. Yeah. Hello, hello. That was it. Oh, that's yeah. great. So as, as you start casting these shows, will you um, dip into your friendship with comedians and things? Like, Absolutely. Will, will Jim Gaffigan be a biker mouse? Oh, I would love that. I don't know if we can afford Jim. You hear that, Jim? That's a compliment. I don't know if we can afford Jim, but I, God damn, do I love Jim. We just did his eighth special yep. coming out um, next week. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, next week. Yeah. All right. Well, I, you know, again, it, it is always such a pleasure to talk Same. to you. I'm, I'm fascinated by just how you approach things, how you, you know, you keep finding ways. Again, I think it goes back to what we were talking about, to support the community, to uh, sort of build the health of the community and just also be a fan of it. You know, it's I, I think, you know, we we see companies sort of leech off things that are po that are popular. And uh, it's a different mindset, a different mentality, and a, and a much more refreshing approach to, you know, be a fan of it first and build from there. And I think you've really done a great job of that. That's what we're trying to do. And yeah. I appreciate that you noticed it. By the way, one thing I do want to say, because I know the kinds of people that follow you, um, hopefully 
this will be the last year where we're only putting out one season of a toy store near you. Okay. Hopefully next year we'll be back to two seasons a year. Oh, it's been be a huge problem for me that we haven't been able to get two out a year. Yeah. So uh, next year hopefully we'll be back to ten episodes a year. Well, that's great. Yeah, Thank I love you. that show. Love that show. Thank and, you so um, much for your time. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, uh, that sounds very <laughs> egotistical. No. I didn't mean it like I love that show. Well, yeah. What I meant was, like, I just love what the show is. Right. Like, we're directly connected to these companies. You know, it's not a lot of money, but we send them money every quarter. Like, it's just, I love, and just, we're so crazy now. It was just very hard to figure out a way to do, like, Ten a year. Yeah. So last year we only put out five. This year, unfortunately, we're only going to put out five. But we have three seasons in post right now. Oh wow! So that should hopefully allow us to do two next year and going forward. So with that show, uh, you kind of, out of necessity, created kind of a different production yeah. cycle way of doing yeah. things, where you would ship them equipment, yeah. and they would shoot the show themselves. Are True, you still doing some, that? By the way, I'd say you... 20% of the stores have their own equipment. Oh, okay. So sometimes they're doing everything. Yeah. And we're only doing the editing and the color correction and distribution. Okay. Um, but sorry, finish your question. Well, I, well, I, you, I mean, are you still using that as a format, sure. or are you sending crews out? Nope. Uh, okay. Still using that format. They That's love so it. Yeah. They love it. Um, they Everyone knows now what it is. So they know if they say yes. So it used to be we'd call them up season one, season two as well probably. And we would be like, hey, we're doing X, Y, and Z. Would you want to do it? Oh my God, yeah. But you got to shoot everything yourself because we obviously can't fly because all the airplanes are grounded. Right, yeah. And um, it was like, wow. Now, first of all, we get incoming every day. But now it's like, like it's not even a comment. We don't even have to talk about it. Everybody knows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, again, I, I I'm fascinated by that. I love the just the the ingenuity of it. I love that it's still that sort of grassroots thing. It's so fun to see those people that you know they wouldn't normally get the spotlight, uh, but they get that's to why talk, we do it. But they yeah. get to talk about the things they love. That's why you know? we do it. That's it's why such we a do it. such a fun format. So uh, yeah, again. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, You're so good to us. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, very so, appreciative for all uh, you do. Yeah, just a big fan. Have a great con. You've got a panel later today. Yeah, you coming? I am coming to that. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and yeah, and then I've got my panel after that. So, what, what time? Uh, mine tonight is at seven. Tonight oh. is women in toys. I'm at a party thing. By the way, can I say something about that? Sure. Can I say something about that? Uh, can we wrap that? Listen, I'd yep. like to be off the record. All right, so we'll go off the record. But yeah. again, thank you. Have a thank good rest you. of your con. Thank you. And we'll talk more soon. Thank you.